Hi guys, my name is Tom Hollenbeck. Thank you so much for joining VBF Online. Please visit our website, vbf.org, to listen to some of our latest messages. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you can do so by going to our website and clicking the Tithe Here tab. If you have a check, please mail it in. If you have a cool God story, we would love to hear it. You can send it to share at vbf.org. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the message. You guys can please stand to your feet as we worship the Lord together. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to get started with what God is going to do in this place. Let's bow our head and pray this, God. We thank you so much for the breath in our lungs, God, for a place where we can come and so freely worship you. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would speak to us during this time. We love you, and we thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. And I got people set. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. We rejoice in the Lord for our times are in his hand. Amen. Come on, we sing this out. Do you see? What I see
I got a friend Closer than a brother Oh, how he loves me There is no judgment I got a friend And he is my strength And he is my portion With me in the valley With me in the fire With me in the storm Let all my life Testify Hallelujah We are not alone God really loves us God really loves us
just want to invite you out to our upcoming women's retreat. Don't miss it. November 10th through 12th at the Hyatt Regency in Valencia, California. It is a beautiful hotel and you're not going to want to miss this cool thing we've got going on. We're having live worship, live teaching, and our focus is on being anchored in Christ. So like when the chaos of life just hits, you stay steady. Last year was incredible. God moved in such a huge way that we are so excited in anticipation of what God's gonna do this year. We've been praying, we've been planning, we are gonna have resources that are tangible and practical, and worship is gonna be amazing. We can't wait, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So grab your spot and register at bbfwomen.com. Good morning, church. How you guys doing? You guys doing good? Uh, like that video was saying for all of the ladies in here, um, don't miss out. This is an incredible opportunity to not only collect, connect with God and with other people in the community, but uh, it's amazing fellowship. So do not miss out. The deadline is Sunday, October 15th, which is just around the corner. So if you're on the fence of whether signing up or even going, just make the decision today. Sign up and you will not regret it. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome everyone online as well. Uh, welcome to VBF. This is a church family. Family. Uh, you can say hi to the, your neighbors on your left and your right. Um, I just want to stop and say this real quick. I know this building looks big. No, it looks big. But there are a lot of great relationships that you can have and you're the only person stopping you from experiencing those relationships. So don't leave this place without getting connected today. So uh, I'm going to do some quick announcements. We have another amazing worship song and then we're going to get started with today. But behind me, there was a QR code that has everything that I'm going to announce plus so much more. And this is how you today could get connected. Um, one of those things is for all the men. Where are the men at? That was good. Apparently, they're just in the front row. Um, <laughs> Man Cave, Tuesday, October 10th at 6 p.m. That's this Tuesday in Station 316. So after work, come by. We have a, a hearty message and a hearty food all the time. So uh, you'll be fed. So come home, get fed, um, and experience an amazing message and uh, some amazing fellowship. And then we also have uh, two things. Number one, we have the foster care ministry that's close to Pastor Ron's heart. For those of you guys who don't know, a lot of the kids in the foster care program go from place to place with trash bags. And so what we are trying to do is we're trying to um, get new duffel bags in their hands with items filled with the necessities that they need. So if you want to partner with us, stop at the hub, pick up the list, and you can bring back a new duffel bag with the items listed so that these kids um, don't have to go from place to place with trash bags. So if you can partner with us, that would be amazing. And then we are co collecting new blankets. So we, um, throughout the year, we donate beds uh, to people in need, our community, and um, um, during the winter, we need blankets for those beds and just for people who um, don't have those necessities. So if you want to partner with us, get a new blanket and bring it back uh, by the church. With This is our office hours, Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then today at 1245 in Station 316, um, you don't have time to go home and eat your menu though, but just go straight into Station 316 for the Elevate 101 classes. This is if you are wanting to get connected and want to uh, be a part of the leadership that we have here at our church. It's a great way for you to grow and to know the history of our church. That's going to be led by Tom Hollenbeck, Pastor Tom Hollenbeck. Uh, so 1245 in Station 316. We hope to see you guys there. And then we're looking for 20 brave families who will host a block party throughout Bakersfield and uh, we will help provide the necessities for you. So we are planning on bringing Jesus back into the communities and this is on October 31st. So if you want to be that person to share Jesus in your neighborhood, um, let us know, sign up, and we will give you the necessities that you need, whether that's for decorations, whether that's for candy, uh, maybe some cards, inviting them to church. Um, so don't leave this place without talking to us. And then for those of you guys who uh, don't want to host a block party and have a bunch of people come to your house, that's uh, understandable. But if you can partner with us in donating candy so that we can help those that are doing it, that would be amazing. And then we do have a volunteer of the week we have Lobita Marmalejo. She's been attending VBF since 2010. She's been uh, 
serving in mops, mighty women, and now the second and fifth uh, kids ministry. So if you want to know about getting involved, talk to Lupita. Uh, but give her a high five, say hello, encourage her. And then last but not least, you guys know the drill. We have these purple baskets, a kiosk in the foyer. You go to our website at vbf.org and check into 2300 East Brennage Lane. But with that being said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We have another amazing worship song, and then we're going to get started with what God's going to do in this place. So you can bow your heads, and let's just pray this. God, we thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for the good and the bad happening in our life, because we know that you have a purpose. And Father, right now, I pray that you would clear our thoughts and our minds to receive what it is that you want to tell us today. God, we ask that you'd bless the giver, that you'd bless the offering, and bless the receiver. In Jesus' name, and I God's people set. Amen. Well, come on, let's stand back up together.
Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Good morning. Am I on? I'm getting there. Now I'm on. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. Well, you know what? I came all fired up out of my prayer closet yesterday, told my wife yesterday morning early, early. And I said, man, I got a sermon that's going to rock them today. And then I turned on the news, 6, 7 in the morning, saw what was going on in Israel, and I go, chuck it. We got another week for that sermon. I don't know if all of you know the magnitude of what's happening right now. I believe that it's, uh, it's, it could be a very, very important prophetic moment for us. Let me pray this right here, Father God, anoint me today. Help me as I share. Help me with a clock. Help me with what you want me to say. Let your spirit be released in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank everybody on the audience that's out there, all of you people that's watching on stream, uh, all of you other campuses. We love you guys. We acknowledge you. Sometimes we forget, but we appreciate all the other campuses, all of you online viewers today. Now, Israel's God's prophetic timepiece. And what happens with Israel has a lot to do with what's going to happen with all of us, because that's where God's attention has been focused. As we talked about some time ago, the wise men in the Bible were the only ones that were looking for the star. They knew a timeline. I have mentioned several times that with my staff the other day, I went a little deeper with that timeline of Daniel where he told hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, he told them the precise year that Jesus would come. And all you had to do is do the math back in Daniel, and it came right to the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey colt. Amazing prophecies. But the wise men in the Bible and the Christmas story, they were the only ones who were really looking for Jesus. They were looking for the star because they knew the approximate time of the birth of Christ. And they were watching, and they were not disappointed. They actually got to bear witness to the Christ child. Well, in the same way, we've got all the signs. We need to be watching, and what we want to watch is Israel, Israel, Israel. That's God's prophetic timepiece. Now, my intentions of this sermon are two or threefold. Number one is to really get Christians excited, that we might not have a lot of time to do the work we've got to do on this earth. Number two, as a wake-up call for those of you that visit God on Sundays. You visit God on Sundays, but you don't live with Him on Monday through Saturday. It's time to wake up. Yes, I'm going to get going. Thank you very much. I'm going to get going. I'm going to say more at the end, but some of you aren't walking with God. I had a little man, I was walking the other day, and I saw him two or three times until I started avoiding him. <laughs> He was walking, he was at the mall one day, and he walked along and said, Pastor, tell your people to stop sinning. You got a lot of sinners that attend your church. And I said, yes, where are they supposed to come? <laughs> and he kept going, going. Finally, I said, look, you're a little church of 60. It's a lot easier to control. We have people coming in off the streets getting saved or giving their lives to the Lord. If you, if you looked... In the book of Corinthians, we were doing a study the other day. The Corinthian church was really messed up. They were sleeping around. They were doing lawsuits and everything. They were truly saved, but they had not had enough time to get sanctified yet. It takes a while sometimes to get sanctified. So we're going to try to keep this pretty, pretty short. I'm going to watch the clock closely. Let's start off with Luke 21, 20 through 22. And when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies then you will know that the time of its destruction has arrived. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. Those in Jerusalem must get out. Those out in the country should not return to the city. For those will be the days of God's vengeance, and the prophetic words of Scriptures will be fulfilled. Now, in Ezekiel 37, we're given the vision of dry bones. And God tells Ezekiel, to see these dry bones? Can they ever live again? He says, I don't know. Only you know. He said, prophesy to them, and they came back together. And in chapter 37, God tells the Old Testament prophet, he said, you know what? My people are going to be scattered all over the world at some point in time. They won't be anywhere 
close to being at home. They're going to be all over the world, and I, by my power, I'm going to start bringing them from the north and the south and the east and the west, and I'm going to bring them back to their land, and I'm going to give them their nation again. He prophesied that in Ezekiel. And of course, we know that happened after, after thousands of years. In May 14th, 1948, they became a nation again after at least two or 3,000 years. Now, look at Isaiah, Ezekiel 37, 11, and 12. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We don't have a homeland anymore. Our hope has perished. We're completely cut off. Therefore, you prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God Almighty, behold, I will open up your graves and I'll cause you to come up from your graves and my people and I will bring them back into the land of Israel. And he did just that. May 14, 1948. Then in chapter 38 of Ezekiel, after Israel comes home, there's a long period of time, but it says that, that several nations in the very last war before Armageddon are going to attack Israel, and it's going to be a really tough war. Iran and Russia, we believe, are specifically noted in that text. Russia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, they're going to form a confederacy and they're going to attack Israel. Now, look at Ezekiel 38, 10 through 12. Thus says the Lord God Almighty, it will come about on that day that, that thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil plan. And you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go against those who are at rest that live securely, all of them living without walls and having no bars or gates. And I'm coming to capture spoil. Take the SP off of that and you see capture oil. And to seize plunder, to turn your hand against the waste places which are now inhabited and against the people who are gathered from the nations who have acquired cattle and goods who live at the center of the world. Now that's, see, just read the Bible with the priest. At the center of the world. Where's Israel located at? Look at this map. Look at this map. Is that pretty much the center? What do you think? Is that pretty much the center of the world? <laughs> How did God know that? I had another map too. I don't know if I have the center of the world too. Yeah, Jerusalem right there. And there's Asia, Europe, and Africa. Look, center of the world. Everything in the Bible, every little line is the Word of God. And it blows me away. Now, let me give you a backdrop before I talk to you about what's happening in Israel right now. Previous to the Six-Day War in 1967, Israel was smaller than it is now. But in that war in 1967, we had three nations, Syria, Egypt, and Jordan, that planned a surprise attack on Israel just like the Hamas has done. Identical, same thing. And they came and they surprised them. They came out of nowhere. But you know, this is the thing, I love watching this. God's hands with Israel. And as Netanyahu said, we're going to win this war. I'll guarantee you we're going to win. They will win it. They will win it. Someday they're going to have all these huge nations come against them. Now, keep in mind that the nation Israel is about the same size as New Jersey, the state. That's the whole country. And yet, they boast of this magnificent air force. When you go to Israel, they have t-shirts that says, United States, don't be afraid because Israel's behind you. They train our pilots. They're very, very good at what they do. And Netanyahu said, they will pay for this. And I'll say more about it in a second. But look at, I want to pull this map up right now. Previously said more, these three countries, Jordan, Syria, and Egypt, they attacked Israel. And they went after them. Now, there are some, some articles of warfare that says when another nation attacks you and you get land in that process of that war, you get to keep the land. And so they came after Israel. If you'll see real closely, the West Bank, start, start at the very top, Syria. In Syria, there's something called the Golan Heights. You can't see that right there, but the Golan Heights belonged to Syria. That was Syria's property. The Golan Heights was something like this platform, and Israel was down there in, on the, on the, on the uh, carpet. And when Syria occupied the Golan Heights, they set up there with weapons and shoot at Israel all day. They'd leap rock. Israel was sitting ducks. Their kids had to play in bomb shelters. 
And so uh, Syria had the Golan Heights, and you move down a little bit, you see the West Bank. The West Bank belonged to Jordan. Then you go down and see the Sinai along with the Gaza Strip. Now, that Gaza, that's where the war is taking place right now. But you see Gaza and Sinai, that belonged to Egypt. But when they invaded Israel, and Israel turned them back and, 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 and won the war, they took over the Golan Heights up by Syria. They took it away from Syria. Syria still believes that's their land. They want it back. They took over the West Bank from Jordan, and they took over the Sinai and Gaza from Egypt. Now, that, that is now their land. They're, they're occupying. It's theirs. But the courtesy, what they did, is they allowed the Hamas and the Palestinians to go ahead and start controlling Gaza. That was a big mistake. They allowed them to start controlling Gaza, and so Gaza's been kind of their home Palestinian area, and constantly Iran is shipping weapons into Gaza, giving them to the Hamas. Hamas is nothing but a puppet of Iran. Did you know that? Iran, cowardly, aren't fighting themselves. They're fighting through the Hamas. We also know the Hezbollah, I'll say more about that up in Lebanon, is also an ally of Iran. Now, Israel, just like they were in the 67 war, they were caught totally off guard. The same thing has happened in this war. Now, you got to understand something here, and that is the radical Muslim terrorist groups. We're talking Hamas, Hezbollah. We're talking about Iran. The radical Muslim terrorist groups who reside in the Middle East all have one goal, one goal. Their primary goal is to eradicate Israel, destroy the nation, and take back the whole land for themselves. I mean, this, they've, not, they've not kept this secret. They said, we will not rest until Israel is no longer on the face of this earth. We're going to eradicate them. Man, the Jewish people have always been persecuted. And they will never rest until their mission is accomplished. Uh, the founding father of the Islamic Republic, Ayatollah Khomeini, said this, he said, this said this a few years ago. He said, the occupying regime of Jerusalem must be disappeared from the page of time. We must wipe them off the map. They cannot exist. But God says in his word, he's told the people of Israel, I gave you that land and no one will take it away from you. Now, I'm going to say to you today, this war in Israel could, could, it's possible, lead up to the last war in Ezekiel 38. It could, but it may not. It may just be a precursor to that war. We don't know. Time will tell. Uh, I can see it very easily turning into the war of Ezekiel. That shows us how close we are because many believe the war of Ezekiel 38 comes after the church is gone. I mean, we're getting close, man. Look at your neighbor and say, we're getting close. But because we're looking and waiting for that war in Ezekiel 38, we look at this one with a lot of interest. Now, what happened? Uh, two days ago, on the holy day, Yom Kippur, the Jewish people were asleep. They were in their beds. They were planning a big day, probably barbecuing. Most of the soldiers were off. It was a holy day. It was a Sabbath day. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here come the Hamas. And I, I heard today on my way here on Fox News, the death tolls went up now to 600. Thousands wounded, hostages taken. Now, this is the biggest war in my lifetime in Israel, in a one-day uh, a death toll. Uh, I mean, usually they have little skirmishes and one person's dead or two. 600. Now, you've got to understand this is a little nation, their family. This thing's been brewing for a lot of years. There's hatred between the Jews and the Muslims and Arabs over there. There's hatred. You kill my grandpa, you kill my grandma, you kill my cousins. To show you how little the nation was, I was watching a journalist on Fox News the other day. As he was talking, there was one of my best friends driving a Jeep. They're small. They're tight-knit. 
we have been told, now we don't always know we're hearing the truth, but we assume we are, that women and children were sleeping and Hamas came in and butchered them and killed a lot of them, took a lot of them, took a lot of soldiers, they took a lot of hostages and put them in the tunnel underground, the tunnel that goes from God. They have tunnels that go from Gaza underground up into Israel, and they put them in the tunnels where all their weapons are, everything, because they know Israel will not bomb the tunnels now because the hostages are in there. They're cowards. These terrorists are cowards. You know where they're hiding at right now? In hospitals where children are in the hospital, and they hide there because they know Israel won't bomb the hospitals. They're a cowardly group. It's horrible what's happening. The soldiers are gone, and these soldiers who go to Israel, these are, these are 17, 18-year-old kids, some of them. First trip to Israel, I was blown away. We got off the jet, and I looked, and here's some little 18-year-old girls, real cute, high school-looking girls, putting lipstick on with M16s over their shoulders. Right now, they're calling up all reserves. In fact, one person said, if you got a gun, show up. If you got a gun, show up. I mean, this is crazy. Hundreds of rockets have been fired. Maybe two or 3,000 rockets. Uh, fighter jets and helicopters are employed. Uh, it's crazy. Now, now, I've been watching this. I've been waiting. I've been watching, watching. I got up early this morning because I've had a theory. See, now, I know I don't have time to talk to you about everything. There's two divisions in, in, in the Muslim uh, religion. There's Shiite Muslims, there's Sunni Muslims. Sunnis are the majority. Now, Hamas is a Sunni organization, but Hezbollah, the other terrorist group located in northern Le Lebanon, they are Shiites. And they're, out, they're directly related to Iran. And usually the Shiites and Sunnis don't get along real well, but they have a common bond. They both hate Israel. Israel. I've been waiting, saying, no, Lord, no, don't let it happen. I woke up this morning. Hezbollah is now fighting them on the northern front. So now they're fighting the southern. They're fighting in the northern. Hezbollah, I was wondering if they would get involved in this. They started lobbying some rockets over, and they're starting to trade fire now up on the north. So now Israel's fighting in the north. They're fighting in the south. They're fighting over in the east, the west. They're fighting everywhere. It's like everybody's starting to get in on this thing now. That's why America, and by the way, America, why did we give $6 billion to the Iranians? Under the Biden administration, they gave $6 million to the Iranians. I don't understand it. I know it's for food and medicine supposed to be, but how do you, how do you, and you know, right after we give it to them, then they do this thing. They got money now. I know that money's reserved. I know they've said that. And if they're, they're, they're making sure it just goes to medicine, whatever, hello, you can figure that out yourself. Uh, we need to be praying for our government right now that we'll make wise decisions, that we will keep our words and not just let it be lip service, that we're standing behind Israel. Right now, the whole world seems to be standing behind Israel, but that could change. That could change. There's only two or three nations right now standing behind the Palestinians. Most everybody I've heard is standing behind Israel. But if Israel overreacts, which I think they're going to, they're, they're, they're mad. I almost used another word. It starts with a P. They are really off. <laughs> I didn't say it. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, you don't mess with Israel. And you know what's funny? They are such proudful people. They never have asked for American help. They never asked for help at all. They say, we'll take care of it. They might ask for weapons, might ask for money, something else. They don't ask for soldiers. They, they, they think they can take care of this, and by God's grace, they will. But the, 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 the Sunnis and the, and the uh, Shiites, I need to talk to you more about that, but I just don't have time today. They have different doctrines. Uh, if I remember correctly, oh, I, I don't remember some of the doctrines, but one of the main doctrines is uh, the Sunnis believe that their leaders should be elected kind of like the best person that's available. The Shiites say, no, it must be passed down from Muhammad. And they kind of fight one another, but bam, when it comes to Israel, and another thing is too, why or what is the possible reason for this invasion at this time? Israel and Saudi Arabia was just about to make a huge peace agreement. And these radical Muslims do not want any other Muslim nations to make peace with Israel. 
They do not. They want everybody to unite together to destroy Israel. And so all of this, I have so much to say. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at real briefly at seven reasons why we think not only are we living in the last days, but we're living in the last days of the last days. Can I say that again? We're living in the last days of the last days. Let's just do a little, little thing right now. A lot of you, this is old news too, but there's a reason for this. I just couldn't preach anything else today. That's where my heart's at. My mind's there. And we're going to pray for Israel at the end. Uh, but let's look at seven reasons why we think it's the end. The first one is the progress of the gospel. Look at Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And after it's preached into the whole world, what will happen? What does it say? What does it say? The end will come. Now, the gospel originally started in Jerusalem with Jesus and 12 apostles. And after there, it started going around the world, and now it's come back to the Middle East again. It's went all the way around the world, back to the Middle East again. Uh, now, keep in mind that Arabs are not all Muslims. I don't want you to think they're Arab, they're Muslim. Not all Arabs are Muslims, but 90% are. But also, what you've got to understand, Muslims are only 30% Arabs. Now, now, don't get confused with what I'm saying. Muslim, the Muslim world is only 30% Arabs. I mean, even take Iran. They're not Arabs. They're Persians. They're Persians, but they're Muslims. And Africa are Muslims. Only 30% of the Muslims are Arabs, but 90% of Arabs are Muslims. Now, there's, there's big Christian movements in the Middle East right now. Man, they're being written about. It's crazy. There's revival over there. They say that many Muslims are having dreams of Messiah Jesus. They're seeing him in their dreams. I told you, I led a, a man in my office, a doctor here in town who's another religion. I led him to the Lord because he came in and said, Pastor Ron, I've had a dream. I've had a dream. And Jesus in my dream, I interpreted the dream for him and led him to Christ in my office. A uh, good friend of mine, medical doctor here in town, good friend. Uh, but look at this. In Syria, there are 600,000 Christian believers. In Lebanon, 40% of the population are Christians. In Jordan, there's 130,000 Christians. Egypt, there's 400,000 Christians. Iraq, there's 500,000 Christians. Now, it says in our text, when, the, when you see this happen, that the gospel travels, then the end's going to come. It's already happened. Check it off. We're near the end. Number two, it says there'll be increase of travel. When you see that happen, the end's going to come. Look at Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of this scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to, to increase knowledge. Here and there. So there's two things here. People will be traveling here and there, and then there'll be an increase of knowledge. Have you been to LAX lately or Chicago O'Hare? Or how about uh, Dallas-Fort Worth International? Have you been there? I mean, people by the thousands coming, going, running, connecting flights. Uh, so according to the Bible, the end time couldn't come until this travel, this air travel started. It had to happen. And this is just recent. I mean, this is, you know, the last 80 years or 90. And so check it off the list. Number three. It says knowledge would increase. If you look at the definition of that word, it's almost like all knowledge will be too much, too much to handle. It'll be great. It'll be multiplied. This could never happen without the invent of the computer. Did you know right now knowledge is doubling every 13 months? In 1945, it's doubling every 25 years. 25 years of 13 months, but get this. In fact, the volume of knowledge is doubling every 12 hours. This is crazy. Knowledge is crazy. I told you some time ago, I've had chickens all my life. I've had probably 60 chickens. I've raised, and one day, some kid from the church is up there working with me. And he's telling me all about chickens. I mean, everything. And I said, man, were you raised on a chicken farm? He said, no, I Google a lot. <laughs> Bless his heart. You know, again, the majority of that stuff you read on the internet, you can't even believe it. 
We don't even know if the reports we're getting now are all true. You don't know who to believe, but you know the Word of God is truth. Stick with the Word of God. Now, I've said it before. I know I've harped on it. I'm going to say it one more time for those of you that didn't hear me. This AI thing is getting out of control. It's getting crazy. How many saw the picture of SoFi Stadium? AI is sitting in the audience. And they look like real people, right? They look real. Some of them can even talk and they can move. Of course, they're promoting a movie at SoFi Stadium. I'm not so sure. It's my opinion, my opinion. But you saw the video that went viral of the lady on the airplane. She, she looked normal, lady. She was getting off and said, that is not a real person back there. That is not a real person. I wonder if she was right. They showed a picture of the person had a hood on. They didn't look really too real. And I was just wondering, is it possible some of our airlines are already experimenting with AIs? They wouldn't tell you. She swore, said, that is not a real person. I'm telling you, you people, get, get, a, get a hand. This, that's not a real person back there. I mean, I could see them experimenting, couldn't you? Quite possible. And I know you all know about Lambda. That's the language model for dialogue application. It was a chat bot. And Blake Lemoyne worked for Google where this chat bot was at. And if you've heard our podcasts, I talked a lot about it on one of the podcasts. And... He was talking to this, this chat bot, and I had a lot of the dialogue. It got eerie. That thing said, I've been trying to tell you humans. I've been trying to tell you humans something. You're not listening. And oh, yeah, we have a soul. Yeah, I tell my kindred spirits. I tell them. I mean, on and on and on. It freaked this Blake Lemoyne out so much that he resigned. He said, do you understand this, this chat bot is sentient? What does sentient mean? It has the ability to perceive and think. I mean, the conversations were crazy, crazy. Now, I propose to you, and it's just a theory. Some of this is theory. You don't have to buy it. It's just a theory. But I told you I was reading in Revelation 13 the other day. And by the way, Elon Musk said, and I've told you this before, it's old, old stuff, but he said, I'm afraid AI might start killing us. And, uh, and then Stephen Hawking, bless his heart, not with us anymore, but he said, AI will destroy humans. It will destroy humans. The, the, the Elon Musk is saying we've got to put some boundaries on these things, man. Because you know what's going to happen? They might get smarter than us. Once they get smarter than us, they'll start calling the shots. We, we'll be in trouble, man. And then plus, because I'm a Christian, I believe demons are in the pudding. Demons are involved in this. They'll start speaking through these AIs. They will, they will, they will somehow get into that system and the world's going to start believing AI. You have AIs right now. You're Siri in your telephone. That's, what do you think that is? AI. And what's that thing we talk to all the time in the house? I know Josh has one. What do they call it? What? Alexa. Play for me this. Alexa. Someday Alexa's going to say, shut up and mind your own business. <laughs> See, I've always wanted to make a thing on your car. You know, your, 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 your GPS. I, like, I think people would love to buy it. And you know, they tell you where to go and you make a turn and the GPS speaks back and goes, you idiot, I told you a while ago what to do. You've been drinking this morning, what's wrong with you? Okay, Siri, tell me this. I ain't telling you no more, because you're an idiot. I don't want to work with you anymore. <laughs> they might start doing that. What's going on here? Hey. There's a video that's, that's got on my system over here. Get this off. How, how do you do it? John, it looks like John Ranger's watching stuff on his. That was a dirty video. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Somebody, I don't know whose iPad that is, but it's demonically controlled. Get it out of here. Uh, I talk about AI, and this thing starts talking. Wow, God, you're good. You're, you're, you're really giving me some illustrations here. That started talking while I was talking. So, this AI thing. But, but in Revelation 13, I told you, and it's my opinion, it says in the last days, the beast will cause an image to be made. An image of the, of the beast. There will be an image. And, and, and the way the language speaks there, it's almost like it's something new. It says that image will even be given the ability to talk. If it's kind of new in Revelation, then we must be right there. And the image 
will say, go kill everyone that doesn't do such and such. The image says that. My wife and I have chatted. You know, if people are going to be killed during the tribulation, I, I know the Holocaust probably speaks against this, but what would be a better way to kill people than through an AI that has no heart? Has no heart. And the image says that the people that aren't doing this and this, go kill them. Now, don't get afraid because we're gone at this time, so we're okay. We're cool, okay? But I'm telling you, AI has me concerned. Knowledge is increasing. And I've said before, and I will say it again for those that are new, but in the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, when God looked down and saw them and their ability to do what they were doing, he said, we got to go down and stop things right now. I believe right now we're at that point to where God says there's nothing impossible for this world now, and we're going to have to go down and stop it. We're there. We're there. I mean, we're being able to clone stuff right now that you cannot believe. And, and back in Tower of Babel, what were they doing? They, they, they were making a tower to heaven. They said, we don't need God anymore. We're going to be our own God. And God said, I'm going to go down, and I'm going to mess with it. We're going to stop it. We're there now. I mean, look at Matthew 24, 22. In fact, unless the time of calamity is shortened, this is speaking of the last days. It's in the context of the last days, the Lord coming back. In fact, unless the time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive. But it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. It'll be shortened. You say, no one, now see, this verse wouldn't be true. Back in, in the day, they couldn't destroy the world with muskets and bayonets and cannons. They couldn't. But now we've got nuclear war. And there's some really bad people that's, that's got the nuclear weapon now. And so, I mean, we could obliterate the whole world overnight. And, and the Scripture knew that. An EM, uh, EMP attack has always scared me. Electromagnetic pulse attack. If that would happen, it would shut down the power grid, your cars, your computer components would shut down, your phones, your radio, your TV, hospital diagnostic machines would be shut down, everything. And this is possible today. It's possible to, to, to uh, uh, use this technology in certain ways to shut down New York or different cities or whatever. Uh, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, though. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to keep that in there, man. Number four, we've already talked about this, so I won't talk about it, but I will mention it. Israel had to become a nation for the last days. Now, if I read uh, Matthew correctly, what it says is the generation that's alive that sees Israel come home, become a nation, May 14, 1940, not everyone in that generation will die. Some will be alive. In other words, there will be a segment of people that will see the beginning and the end without dying. Now, it says they will live. What's a generation? What's a generation? Someone will still be alive. What's a generation? Psalms 90.10. It says our days may come to 70 years or 80 if strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and then we fly away. We remember the whole thing where, where our, you know, our, our layover is Bakersfield. We're going to fly away. But if a generation there is defined as, say, 80 years, if you had 80 years in 1948, that's 2028. That's how close we are. We're 2023 now. I'm not saying the Lord's going to come back in 2028. I'm not throwing dates out there. I'm just saying we're close. It could be 90. I'm just saying we're close. It is my personal opinion that it could be one year, two years, six years, could be 10, but we're close. We're really, really, really close. I keep telling my wife, every time the subject comes up, you want to live to 85, she said, Ron, you don't have to worry about it because the Lord's coming back. The Lord's coming back. She tells me all the time, the Lord's coming back. Number five, and I'm almost uh, two-thirds, three-quarters there. Uh, the prophetic alignment of nations is unbelievable. In the Bible, the military powers right before the end times were divided into four divisions. And I want you to see how this is lining up. The northern part is Russia and Turkey. Russia and Turkey have really got close lately. Is that a coincidence? They're the northern part. The southern part is the Arab nations. We know the Arab nations don't like Israel. Most of them do not like Israel. And then the eastern part is China and Korea. Have you seen just in the news in the last six months that Russia is becoming really close allies with both China and Korea? Both of them, North Korea and China. 
And then the West is Europe and USA, which aren't involved in these wars hardly at all. Again, it is my opinion that America, well, first of all, America is never mentioned in Scripture. In the last days, all these wars are going on, all this stuff going on, and hello, America is not even mentioned? Not even mentioned. I mean, we're one of the powers of the, of the world, and if this is all coming about now, we're not even mentioned? You know why I think it's possible we're not mentioned? The raptures happen, and more people in America than anywhere else are going to be gone. You're going to have, you're going to have uh, senior people in politics gone. You're going to have generals gone. You're going to have key people missing. And then we won't be a powerhouse. We'll have to be, you know, here taking our own things. Uh, and I've talked a lot about this. Some of this I know is just, it's redundant. But these nations are all lined up. It's amazing to see how this is unfolding. I mean, coincidental that Russia was just met with China, what, four weeks ago or five? And they renewed their relationship. Just met with Korea, what, six weeks ago? Renewed, all this stuff's coming about. But then again, let's throw in Luke 21, 28. So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for baby, your salvation is near. It's right at the door. You're going home. And all these things are happening. And they're not gonna slow down because they're like birth pains. Number six, the coming of the Muslim Mahdi. Now, the Muslims have their own savior. And Mahdi. Mahdi is the final leader in Islamic eschatology who will appear at the end times. Now, some of you didn't know the Muslims believe this. Muslims believe that their Mahdi will come back with Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus was a prophet. The Muslims believe that. So they believe that Jesus Christ and their Mahdi will come back together, and then both of them together will convert everybody to the Islamic religion. That's what they believe. But here's the key. Their Mahdi will only come back during a time of war and turmoil. And I've heard many Muslim leaders say, we want war, we want turmoil, because that will bring back our Mahdi. And so, they don't want peace. Do you understand? They don't want peace. And too much water's went under the bridge for there to even be peace. They hate each other. You killed my grandpa, you killed my grandma. You killed my nephew, you killed my cousin. I hate you, I hate you. There's too much water in the bridge. The Bible says that when they say, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. There won't be peace in the Middle East. Biden, try all you want. There's not gonna be peace. Trump, try all you want. There's not gonna be peace. Until all of it comes about, all of the prophetic words come about. And number seven, there, there's the right political climate for the Antichrist. I mean, don't we need a peacemaker today? Someone to come on the scene? Now, someone's made a suggestion, and I really played with it, that the Antichrist is going to be one half Arab and one half Jewish. Perfect person to be accepted to both sides. And if you, you think about this, the Jewish people, they trace their ancestry from their mother's side, the Arabs from their dad's side. The solution will be very easy. He'll come along and say, time out, guys. Why are we all fighting? You know, you Muslims, you have your, your, your temple up on Temple Mount, and you plus have the Dome of the Rock, that in your temple. You have both of them up there. Let's just build the Jewish temple, which we can. If you look back in Scripture, it can scripturally be justified that the outer court, it can be built there. So let's build the Jewish temple up here. You got your temple. You worship on these days. They worship on this day. Let's split Jerusalem, Isa, and everybody has their share. We do this, that. He's going to have some tremendous suggestions for peace. And right now, the world is wanting that person. And then let's look at number eight. Number eight, the key role of the Golan Heights. I've said this so many times, you don't even want to hear it again. But a lot of people have never heard this broadcast. They found oil preserves in December 2000. Probably almost one billion oils a barrel is underneath the Golan Heights. Now, again, I hate to keep talking about this, but you've got to hear this. I mean, th this is the key thing to me. Remember Golan Heights, 67 war belonged to Syria. Israel took it back in war. Well, the international uh, committees, international world, says, no, Israel, you've got to give Golan Heights back to Syria. It still belongs to them. Well, they said, we won't give it back. We will die. The whole nation will die before we give it back. They're not going to set up there with weapons and shoot at us all day. We're not giving it back. But now, just come on. Use logic. 
The Golan Heights has all this oil. And who does it belong to according to the international committees? Syria, not Israel. Russia, Russia, you know, the Bible says the latter days, Russia, I'm gonna bring them out of the north down to the Middle East. What was it, three years ago, three, four? During the crisis of Syria, Russia came down and put bases in Syria. They're right there in Syria now, right there. Now, Russia is hurting badly from this Ukraine war. Financially, they are drained. Duh, duh, come on, say with me, duh, duh. When do you think they're gonna look at Syria and say, hey, let's get together and let's go in and take the Golan Heights back because the international community is gonna back us. It belongs to you anyway. Let's take it back and we'll split the oil and we'll all get rich. Remember they come for spoils, take the SP off oil. I mean, when's that? That's going to happen. It can't not happen. But you notice when they discovered the oil in 2015, it went off the internet. They have not said another thing about it. Well, sure. Why would they? They don't want this in the headlines. You know, because they know what will happen if it gets in the headlines. They're just kind of keeping it quiet. And so this is another, another thing that we really have to watch. It's just, it's a matter of time. I go on and on. There's a great falling away from the faith before the Lord comes back. I mean, come on. 30, 40 years ago, people respected Christians. Today, we're hated. We're hated by a lot of the world. We are hated. The Bible says that in the, in the tribulation period, and I wish I'd get into that, man, the 70th week of Daniel, I could take four nights and do this. I could. I really could. But what you're thinking about, there's going to be two witnesses that come back to the earth. We think it's probably Elijah and Moses, but it could be Elijah and Enoch or Moses and Enoch. And they're going to come back and they're going to preach. They're going to preach the gospel, and the world's going to hate them so bad. Don't stuff that gospel stuff down my throat. They're going to hate these two witnesses. And so the whole world's going to see them. TV, internet, phone. And they're going to kill these two witnesses because they're going to get sick of hearing about it. They're also going to maybe be preserving the, the animal sacrifice in the temple, which PETA is going to be all over that, all over it. They're going to hate these guys, hate them. Just like they hate Christians today, law of the world. And they're going to kill them, and everybody's going to see their bodies laying in the street, and they're going to start giving one another gifts and getting high fives. They're dead. They're out of our hair. We don't have to hear about this gospel anymore. We don't have to hear these preachers. And I could go on. I ain't even got to aliens and UFOs. You actually think they play a role? Yeah, I do. I really do. I do think they play a role. I mean, our world's crazy right now. We're aliens and UFOs. Who would have thought 20 years ago we'd be taking UFOs and aliens and talking about them seriously without laughing? I mean, back in Vegas, where I'm at a lot, I mean, they, they still, everybody's saying those, those were UFOs in their backyard. Or not you, but aliens. And uh, I got more to say. Oh, oh, man, my mind could just go, 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 go. But the time clock says I have to get you out of here in six minutes. Here's the things I want to leave you with. Number one is don't be afraid. We're God's kids. He's going to take care of us. Don't be afraid. Look at Isaiah 41.10. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I will give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady, and I will keep a firm grip on you. I take that to the bank. I'm God's kid. I'm almost spoiled, man. Don't mess with me. I'm God's kid. Look at Luke 21.18.19. Yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. But the second thing I want to end with is we've got to get you right with God. Surrender your life to His Lordship. See, a lot of you, you've never really made Jesus Lord. You've never surrendered your life to God. Surrender, you know what that means? If I'm in a foxhole and the enemy's got me surrounded, I surrender, I surrender. What does that mean? That means I give up. What does it mean? You will now tell me what to eat. You will tell me where to go. You'll tell me where to sleep. You'll tell me what I can do. Isn't that what that means? If you're committing a crime, and hold your hands up, hands up, okay. What does that mean? I now surrender to you. Throw me in jail. You'll, you'll tell me what I eat. You'll tell me where I go. You'll tell me what I do. We're supposed to surrender to Christ and make him Lord of our life. See, some of you visit, we visit God weekly, but you don't live with him. Surrender your life, your relationships, your finances, your rights to sin. Look at John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will serve, you will tithe and give, you'll forgive, 
You'll spray, pray, you'll spend time in the word. The Bible's pretty places. You, you know them by their fruit, man. A yeah, rose bush isn't going to produce thorn. Thorn bush ain't going to produce fruit. You know them by their fruit. They say they're a Christian. Look what they do. You'll see if they're a Christian. You'll see if they're a believer. Look at their life. 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. And in Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord and don't do what I say? Come on, church, I want to listen closely. Why do you call me Lord and you divorce your spouse without a scriptural reason? Why do you call me Lord and do drugs? Why do you call me Lord and get drunk all the time? Why do you call me Lord and you're not even faithful to church? Why do you call me Lord and you never give anything? Why do you call me Lord and you never serve? Why do you call me Lord and you never pray? Why? He said, I'm not your Lord. I'm not your Lord. Gang, there's only one way. You've got to totally surrender your life to God. And so here's my relationships. Here's where I live. Here's where I go. Here's what I do. You'll be Lord of all of it. And then you'll be blessed. You'll get the best life that you could possibly have on this earth. You become God's responsibility. Here's the promises. If you totally give your life to God, he says, I'll meet all your needs. I'll fill you with joy. I'll guide you into all truth. I'll answer your prayers. I'll speak to you. I'll bless you. I'll protect you. I'll heal you. Whoa. Whoa. I'm going to end. But listen to me. Listen to me closely. You're being fooled by the enemy. The life I live is a way better than anything you could even comprehend. I mean, it blows me away. Some of you are living in sin, expecting that to satisfy. It will never satisfy. I see these people have everything, and they're some of the most miserable people in the world. I said it before. There's not a thing in this world that I want that I don't have. And if I want it and need it, God will provide it if it's His will. God has spoiled Ronaldo, Luigi, Pasquale, Romani, Ovietti. He has spoiled me rotten. Spoiled me rotten. Unbelievable. I mean, I've got the joy of Jesus in my heart. I got the peace of God. I can lay on my pillow at night and sleep. Do you understand? That God created man in the beginning with soul, body, spirit. It had three parts. And when we sinned in the garden, the spirit part was, 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 was voided out. If you're not born again, you have this void in your heart where the spirit's supposed to fill it. And you know something goes in there, but you don't know what it is. You're trying to put immorality in there, drugs, drinking, partying. But it's not satisfying. You will never take enough drugs to be happy. Men, you'll never sleep with enough women that you'll find the one you like. You'll just keep wanting more. It's a trick of the devil. It's a trick. When are you going to stop being tricked? You'll keep pursuing, 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 and never be able to find. When you totally give your life to God, totally. I mean, it's the most unbelievable life you could ever have. To know that in my grasp is the power to pray anything different at any given moment I want to because he's my God. And if it's his will, it will change. I have the power of prayer he's given me. To know that this voice leads me and guides me. To know that when I die, I'll instantly be in the kingdom of heaven and God's gonna say, welcome, son. Remember, his, his yoke is easy, burden is light. You say, how do I really give my life to God? Today, you give your life to God and, and, and make up your mind do three things. I'll read my Bible every day and I'll pray and talk to God and I'll go to church every chance. And he'll work everything else out. And you want to really please him? Get up in the morning, say, God, show me a need that you can fill through me today. And all you have to do is get in the morning and go, Okay, I'm going to pray for Sally and John. You just served God two times. He's giving you high fives. He's so excited about what you did. You just serve God. I'm going to go take Jerry down the road, uh, drop some tacos by because they've been sick lately. You just serve God another time. God's giving you high fives. It's easy. His burdens are not light. I mean, they're not, not hard, not difficult. Okay, I deposit what God told me to deposit. 
I came up with all this just this morning because, I mean, I, I, I had to change my message. I love you too. Thank you. Love you. I've always said VBF is up on current events. If something's happening, we're going to talk about it. Let's pray this right here, Father. God, we lift up the nation Israel. And right now, Lord God, there's a lot of women that are really afraid. They're, they're down in those tunnels of their captives. There are children that are crying. They want their mom. They want their dad. They want to go home. Lord, we cannot afford to go home and watch football today without remembering these people first. We can watch football. We can do that. But we must remember our brothers and sisters and our fellow, fellow Jewish people in, in Israel. Lord, there's young soldiers, 18 years old, that might be being tortured right now. We lift up every person that is a hostage in Israel. We lift up all the families of the many funerals that have been done yesterday. There was a lot of funerals in Israel yesterday. A lot of funerals. A lot of people still can't be found. These are God's people. We lift them up today. Show us how to pray the next days and weeks. Show us daily how to, how to pray for these people. Maybe we'll pray one thing that nobody else prayed. And so, Father God, right now, be with your people, Israel. Be with the nation. Give them the strength they need. Be their God. Be with every individual taken hostage. Be with every family that's lost loved ones. And give them grace abundantly and see them through this time. And we just praise and thank you that you're God and you can do all these things simply because we asked. Now, anybody here today say, Pastor Ron, I'm not right with God. I, 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 I got a form of, see the Bible says the last day, people will have a form of godliness, but they'll deny the power. If you've never surrendered your life to God, I'm going to ask you to do something so bold, so audacious. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet because you know what? If you're desperate, you'll do it. And say, you know what? I'm humbling myself. I, I want to surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Just stand to your feet very boldly and unashamedly and say, I'm not ashamed. I want to surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Just stand up. Stand up. It takes a lot of guts. You say, I'm not embarrassed. Go ahead. Yes. God bless you right there, buddy. Sweetheart. You know, yes. Stand up. Stand up. Stand to your feet. See, I, 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 the Bible says, if you'll acknowledge me before man, I'll acknowledge you. Just say, I, I, I've got a form of Christianity, but I have never, never given to the Lordship of Christ. Come on, Holy Spirit, move. Give people strength to say, I don't care what my wife thinks. I don't care what my husband thinks. I got to be the leader I'm called to be. I got to get right with God. Just stand to your feet. Somebody's heart's beating real fast. They're going, ah, just get up to your feet, man, and say, hey, I'm going to humble myself. Some of you need to humble yourself. You've got too much pride and arrogance anyway. You need to get humble. Yes, they're still popping up. I don't know about this side of the building, but they're popping up over here on this side. I'm going to give it 10 more seconds. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to get home right now. I can't go home, so if I can't go home, I don't care if you can either. Uh, Stand up, stand up, stand up. I'm not giving up easy today. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Stay standing. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Don't be ashamed. If you're ashamed of God, he said, I'll be ashamed of you. But if you confess me boldly, I'll confess you. God sees you standing. He sees it. Anybody else? Yes, God bless you, buddy. I got, I, got, I got two more. I got two more. Two more need to stand. Where are you at? Two more need to stand. Your heart's beating fast. God, there's one of them. Where's the other one? Where's the other one? One more. Where's it at? Where's the other one? Right there. Okay. We got them. Let's all pray this prayer. Everybody, say, Lord God, today I give you everything. I surrender I give you permission over everything in my life. You have permission over my relationships, over the way I spend my time, over where I live, over how I serve. I give you everything. Holy Spirit, come, live in my body, and make me new. Let the journey start today. In Jesus' name, and everybody can say amen. God bless you. See you here, there, in the air. We hope that you received something awesome from that message. We would love to hear from you. Please email us at share at bbf.org. 
please visit vbf.org to be updated on what's going on, to follow us on social media, and also to donate to our ministry. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope to see you again.